All right, what's up, y'all? Um, so last time we went over how to um, properly displace um, welded items using the old type of weld. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use um, a different kind of weld, uh, which are weld constraints. It's a newer, I think the newest form of welding um, compared to the other type of weld. Let me um, start off by adding two parts. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to, how to use weld constraints manually like in the studio and how to do it with uh with the script so first off if you wanted to weld them manually while building um let's say i wanted to weld these stairs right if i were to just leave it like this right and i were to run the game like right now as you can see oh uh, i did this right and then i ran it like that as you can see when they fall, they disconnect. Basically, what welding is, you're you're sticking the two parts together so that when, um, let's say they move or they fall, they move together and stick together without disconnecting like how you saw before. So, if uh, to make a weld constraint, you want to go to model at the top right here, the model tab at the top right here, and then you want to go to create. You click create, and um, actually no, you click the drop down menu right, and then you look for weld right here. Right, and once you click weld, um, there's several ways to actually connect them together. You can just straight up highlight them, these two parts like this, and then click create, and then that's going to weld them together. But if you want this to happen, you got to make sure the create uh, option is set to weld, like right here, and then it's going to weld them together, as you can see. So now if I were to drop them like this, boom, as you can see, they don't, they don't disconnect like how I did before, right? And the cool thing about this is that you can do it with like many different, uh, uh, many different parts, right? So I want to make this green. Um, make this uh, um, blue. As you can see, since I already uh, had these two parts welded, the reason why you can see that the weld connects with these two parts is because I duplicated it, and that's like that's because like I I, I clicked it right, and I click Control D to duplicate it, so like it still stays. It still stays welded, right? But if I were to add new parts, like boom, right here, you can just click one of the parts that's welded to to the other part and then click them. Highlight just two parts, and then boom, then it does it for you. If I wanted to weld multiple parts at once like that, I would have to like make sure they're they're colliding. I just remember that. So yeah, I want to make sure they're colliding. So now if I were to highlight them all and then click create, as you can see, now they're all like that. But you can you it's, it is still possible to to weld them without them colliding. So but um, if I want to do that, I can't like highlight all of them at once. I would have to do them individually. So boom, boom, create, and then boom, boom, create. And if you can't really see the um, the little green arrow right here, you want to make sure show weld at the top right here is um, highlighted. So you just click that, and it's going to show you like that. If you want to see, see when I like um, hover over it, it shows me like the, the little the details and stuff like that. Um, you want to make sure if you want to see that, you want to make sure you have constraint details right there, and then. You can see it and also this option draw on top allows you to see like little the, the, the little squares through the parts so yeah um, there's also another way to like um, create the welds without using the little um, tool at the the top right and that to do that all you need to do is just literally you can go inside the part click this and then, like right click right here you can, yeah right click not right click I'm sorry oh my got you can um you click the little plus sign right here what is going on i can't do that anymore <laughs> okay what for some reason I, I don't see the you guys see this right look plus sign plus sign um i'm just gonna right click and uh insert object there we go and then um weld constraint right now that we have the weld constraint inside of this part we can click on the weld constraint you can look at the parts right here the parts uh, property right here and then you can set part o what i like to do um people say people say that it doesn't matter but like what i like to do um that makes it easier for me since i'm used to the old type of weld right what i like to do is i set part zero to the the part which the weld is inside so for me i'll set part zero to this green part right here since that is that is the parent of the weld and then I'll set part one to the the part that I wanted to connect to, like that. 
but it really doesn't matter but like i like doing that because it makes it easy for me to remember when i'm like scripting it so yeah that's the other way to to weld things manually um if you were to, if you were to add another part right now like this you would have to um add another weld in manually like that and then that that'd be the same thing right click click uh insert object and then weld right weld constraint and then click on that part zero yellow and then part one blue boom now moving on to the the scripting part of this um let me insert a script in I, I like putting them in service script service unlike the old version of welds which was like i think um oh wow hold on unlike the old version of welds when you're making when you're welding two parts you don't you don't need to now set the 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 manual c frame displacements because i remember the old one we used to have to do like weld dot c o equals and then we tell like you know um uh, we, we would like type in the manual c frame right but we don't have to do that with this one right that's what makes this one less complicated so let me let me spawn in two parts to show you guys what i mean All right, so now we have our two parts. Um, if we were to run it right now, you would see these two parts in the workspace. Right now, they're, as you can see, let me take out the, let me despawn this thing, right? And then, as you can see, we have both the green part and the blue part, right? Cool. So, um, um, normally, if we were to use the regular weld, like I was saying earlier, if I did, right and then i would to set this welds parent to the green part and then weld dot part zero equals um green part dot part one equals blue part right um let's just say for for testing purpose i'm going to make these two parts collidable so you can see what i'm talking about or non-collidable oops right normally if i were to do that oh i gotta make sure they're anchored to because it might just go through the okay i'm gonna make i'm gonna make the the blue part anchored right right because normally if i were to do this right you would see that oh why can we only see the green part that's actually false because the blue part is also here as you can see when i click this this is the blue part you see the color is blue but they're like in the exact same like they're, they're in the exact so if i were look if i were to make the green part transparent all the way right you can see the blue part is literally inside of it right that's because when we have, when we use the regular manual weld it literally sets the position to be the exact same it, it puts the green part position in the blue part right and we would have to manually offset it. So if we were to make, let's say we wanted the green, the green part to be above uh, the blue part, right? We would have to do well dot uh, c o equals or c one equals uh, c frame dot new, and then we would do right, and that would literally. And now we can see that oh, it's above, it's above the um. The thing we would have to set the c frame manually, right? And that's that's kind of extra, you know what I'm saying? No one wants to do that, that extra work right um and the reason why i'm using c1 even though the green part is part zero um i had a video explaining that um you can check that out in the link description link down below in the description if you don't like using uh, weld constraints which, which i'm about to go over but yeah we would have to set we would have to displace it manually if you were to do this with the weld constraints for instance let me delete this part right if you were to do this with weld constraints right now instead of let me run this real quick instead of the parts being directly inside of each other they're going to be displaced how they were um i don't even know where they, they're going to spawn but they're going to be displaced how they were when like before the world was created so look if i were to run this right now okay so it's inside because it's it's yeah hold on it's inside because it's it's not collidable I mean, let me just like 
let me change the C-frame a bit. If I were to do this right now, like right here, if I were to do green part, the reason why it is still like the same is because since the green part is non-collidable, it falls down. So like it welds it right there. But hold on, green part dot C frame. Green part dot C frame equals C frame. Um, well, times equals C frame dot U. Let's move it like three studs to the front, right? Oops right and then now if i were to try it let's see boom as you can see here it, it welds it it welds even though it's welded look if we were to go to model and we clicked uh show welds right boom you can see it's welded and it's already displaced we didn't have to do it uh manually right and to clarify that let me show you how it would look with the the regular weld right even though we still have the displacement of three studs in the front it will still try to put it directly inside of that part so look as you can see boom it's the green part is still literally inside the blue part because I've already make the blue part transparent. You see, whoa, that's a cool color. Whoa, that, that's really cool. But if I were to make it fully transparent, you can see the green, the green is still inside there. You see, so um, that's that's the cool thing about weld constraints. You don't have to go through the extra problem of um displacing it. Um, let's say that let's say you're thinking that hey, um, what if I want to change the position or, or displace the one of the parts, um, when the weld is already created, right? Um, it's also really easy. If you want, if you wanted to do this, all you would have to do is just literally, just literally change the position, but using position instead of C frame, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So let's say I wanted to, it starts off, right? Let's say it starts off that hey, the green part starts off three steps ahead of the blue part, right? But you wanted to move it up again, like later on or something for some reason, right? Um. All you would have to do is just change the green part's position like you normally would if you were creating the part, right? So you do green part dot position plus equals vector three dot new. So I mean normally you guys might have seen you guys might be used to like this green part dot position equals you know green part dot position plus or or dot position oh my god dot position plus vector three right and then you would do that <laughs> you do this right um, what I'm saying here is literally the exact same thing. This notation or this like this this basically means that plus equals means that you're adding to what it already is. Plus equals means you're adding to where it what it already is. Same thing with minus equals, same thing with times equals, just in case you're confused and why I'm doing that. So and also makes the line shorter. So I, I just tend to use this more than just saying equals green part of the presenter. Right. So um uh yeah you do you do green part that position plus equals um um zero three zero so you're gonna add three studs up to the existing position of green part right now as you can see when I run it right boom it moved up but then if we were to check right here um and then we click show welds it is still welded right it is the part is still welded because this part is not it's not uh it's not anchored right. If it wasn't if it, if it wasn't welded, it would fall straight down. So yeah, th that's how you displace it after the weld is, has already been um, you know instantiated or whatever. So um, you might be also thinking that a if if moving the position just displaces it right because this can also work with the blue part. If we were to do the blue part and then we do the same thing, um, the blue part would also just move up, but it's still welded as you can see. If I were to go to model, it's still welded right. Cool. But you might be thinking that, hey, if, if I can't change the position, or you might be thinking that if I change the position, right, it's only going to move one part. How do I move the entire thing as, as um, you know, one welded instance, right? And to do that, um, it's, you would have to change the C-frame instead of the position. So let's say that you wanted to move the entire thing, the both of the parts at the same time using only one part up. You want to move it up three studs, right? So we're going to leave this here just for the, the purpose of the displacement, right? I'm going to add another another line of code. And this time we're gonna do blue part dot c frame times equals c frame dot new zero three zero. This is the same thing as saying you know blue part dot c frame equals blue part uh, dot c frame times c frame dot. That's it's the exact same thing, really. Right. That's the exact same thing. So we're gonna add this line of code because with weld constraints, right? If you wanted to move the entire um, thing together, you would have to change the c frame. But if you want to displace it, you would have to change the position or orientation, right? So yeah, let's let's get into that. 
I'll get into the orientation part um, soon. But yeah, let's see. So first it's going to displace it and it's going to move the entire thing up. As you can see, boom. And if we were to check, they're still welded. Boom. So yeah, um, I feel like, personally, I feel like the weld constraints are is really easy. It's easier to use than the regular weld. It saves you the headache of adding, you know, of trying to, you know, do the, uh, the CO and the C1 stuff. All right, so let's say we wanted to, you wanted to, like, change the orientation of that part, right? So... It's basically the same thing as changing the position. You would do blue part dot ori orientation uh, plus equals vector three dot new. Um, we change it by ninety degrees to the x axis zero zero. Uh, you, uh, as I said before, plus, plus equals means that we're adding on to the existing orientation. So we're going to add ninety degrees, right? And if I were to run that, it would move up and then rotate, as you can see, and then boom. When it moves the entire thing with C frame, both parts move, right? Now, let's say you wanted to change the orientation of both parts, right? Um, I'm going to take this part out just to not create confusion. And now I'm going to, if you want to change the orientation of both parts, you would do, you pick one of the parts, right? And then you do blue part dot C frame um, times equals C frame dot angles, right? Because that's how you change the orientation using uh, C frame. And for that, C frame dot angles takes in um, what we call radians, so we would have to use a math function, math dot rad, which translates degrees into radians. So let's say we wanted to add 90 degrees onto it, right? We do the math dot rad 90. It's going to translate. Um, it's going to translate 90 degrees into radians, which I believe is um, pi over two, right? So we're going to do math dot rad uh, 90 zero zero, and then if we were to run this. It's gonna move it up and then rotate the entire thing 90 degrees. Boom, as you can see. Um, like you can put this part in any of the axes. If you wanted to, you can change the UI by 90 degrees, which is gonna like turn it around. It's gonna move up and then like turn it around this way. Boom, as you can see. Yeah. Um, it also moved it up because we still have this code right here, which moves it up three studs again. So it moved it up twice. Well, it moved, it moved the blue part up twice technically, but it only moved the green part up once because, you know. But yeah, that's basically how how you do it. Um, there's also some other um, useful useful properties of the weld, right? Which is um, let me add a weight one right here, which is the enabled property. You can also do weld uh, dot enabled and set that to false. This is gonna like this is gonna um, basically disconnect the weld. And if you were, if you were to see that right here, right moves it up, rotates it, and then disconnects the weld, and then the green part falls. The reason why the green part went through the floor is because it's not collidable. Because if I were to make it collidable, if I were to, like, make the green part uh, collidable, um, it would just, like, hit the floor normally. Like that. See? Right. So, you can do this, and you can also just re-enable re the weld, right? So, you can also just, let's see if I were to add another one, wait one, and I did weld dot enable equals true that's going to set the weld back like it's going to connect the parts together again and then if i were to move it move it up again right let's see i'm going to wait like a point uh one second again if i want to move it up again um i just copied this code right here so if i were to move it up again um they will all move together so look it's going to move up it's going to rotate it's going to drop it's going to connect again it's going to move up see boom let me try that one more time with uh the visual so you can see what i'm talking about show welds see when it's not connected it's, it's, it's gray the one that's connected again is going to be um green so yeah that's basically it for weld constraints um i think it's really useful and i, I per, per personally prefer it over the old weld so if you guys know some other cool functions and things to do with the with weld constraints let me know down below so we can all you know learn together i'm still learning myself but uh yeah that's it for today and take it easy y'all